A typical race day starts the week before. It's the preparation of the car, fuel, gas, loading the vehicle the day before, loading the trailers, getting all the equipment ready. Well, I'm out of bed at five o'clock and I'm at the workshop by about six, 6.30, uh, at the track by about 7.38, warming the cars, have them all ready to go. And the customer normally rocks up about 8, 8.30, gets all his paperwork done and kick off the day by 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And, and we're generally going through, you're trying to get the most out of it. I, I would say easy from five in the morning until 10 o'clock at night we're going. We'll just try something. We'll just try something with a battery switch. Some days they're running hot and they're fantastic, and other days they're just not. <laughs> and it's very frustrating. But we just got to give them a good car, a good setup, that they will go out and enjoy their weekend. Cool, mate. Good to go. There's a few sayings that are very real about race cars. Uh, a great engine and an average chassis will never win a race. Whereas a, an average engine and a great chassis can win every race. The day normally finishes at five o'clock, but we'll normally sit down and have a debrief at the end of the day. By the time we come home, unpack, I'll, I'll get home at seven o'clock and I'll go off and take the laptop home and review all the criticals on the car. So yeah, it's a, it's a long, long day. The craziness of racing, it really is. Look, oh, I've done that many all-nighters, it's insane. you just got to have the car ready and the car finished. And more recent years, we've been a little bit more organised, but to build a willing race car takes a lot of passion. How you find you this tyre so far? Can you, have you felt it at all, Terry? Sorry? This tyre, have you had a go on this tyre yet? The setup of a race car wouldn't vary much from, say, Bathurst to Phillip Island. Look, like, they're both high-speed circuits. you just got to look at the characteristics of the circuit and then assess it from there. For instance, Bathurst, it's fast, it's flowing, it's, it's, you're not using a lot of ripple strip. It's not as bad as what, say, Indy is, you know, so it certainly may run a different pad compound. We may raise the car, we'll soften the shocks, we do little, uh, make minor adjustments. Some categories you're not allowed to make changes and others we are. So where we are allowed to, we may make spring changes and so on. It all comes down to the level that we're racing at and the budgets that we have to play with. The workshop's based in Wetherill Park in New South Wales. It's not far, about five minutes from Eastern Creek. We've got three guys work full time. Now that we've been around for 30 years, you get to know the good guys. There's a lot of guys out there that say they're good, but no, no, you can filter it. I know what to look for nowadays. It varies from season to season. Like this year, we're looking after about three cars, mainly in the historics. It's not all about the current model race cars, but there's some great old cars here. The, the 430 Challenge car, which uh, we looked after this car. It's been parked for some time, but finally pulled it, pulled it out of storage and we're going to do some track days and you'll get back into it. Uh, a Radical, again, the client that bought this car, he just bought it as a track day car. The, this car here, the GIO Nissan, it was a very famous car in its day. In the, in the days, I was working on the Sierras and and in Group A and so on, and then these things came along and just made us all look like fools, and I can see why now when we work on it, but uh, it was a step above everything else in the day, so it's a joy to get to work on it now. The setup of a race car is very important, but at the same token, it's relative to how they're gonna drive the car. Some people may get an average driver, very average driver, and put a Jim Richards setup into his car. It's a waste of time. The alignment angles and and so on that the, the gym uses, he uses because he's using that much of the car. But if you're an average driver and you're not using those, you would certainly come back. So I would start off with more sedate setups until they sort of got a handle on it and then slowly move the setup along with their skill levels because otherwise the car can become dangerous if it's not driven properly.